Hi guys, it's Tammy with Pretty Presets, and I am coming to you today over something exciting, something a little bit new, um, and that maybe most of you guys did not actually know about me, which is that I shoot um, boudoir photos, as well as what you're used to seeing, um, the kids and the family, uh, that type of stuff. I also am a boudoir photographer. And I'm also excited to tell you that this week I will be doing the first uh, Pretty Takeover, which is basically where um, on the Facebook page, the uh, Pretty Presets Facebook page, the Pretty Actions page, in our forum, and on our blog, I will be writing some articles, I'll be having some videos, I'll be available for questioning and discussion about um, boudoir photography and about how I shoot and about how I edit. So these videos right here, there's going to be three of them. I'm going to edit these, but I'm going to break them down just uh, so that it's not so long and if you want to just go back and watch one. So I'm going to edit this photo first and um, I use Lightroom first, then I take the photo into Photoshop and then I bring it back to Lightroom. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do that. I do edit boudoir a little differently than um, I do the kids and stuff that you're used to seeing from me. Uh, they're usually a little bit darker, a little bit more maybe romantic would be the word that I would use. I do more retouch. Um, pretty much my clients are expecting a retouched, really nice version of themselves. And uh, not all boudoir photography has to be like that. There are plenty of uh, boudoir photographers who have a very real look or um, really embrace the flaws or embrace, you know, that type of thing. And that's, that's totally fine. In no way do I want you to think that if you uh, want to shoot boudoir, if you do shoot boudoir, that it has to look like this. It really doesn't. But for me and for my clients, uh, this is what I'm going to show you today, which is a definite retouched version of the photo. Um, so I can really show you the power of Lightroom and Photoshop, and I promise I don't do anything difficult in Photoshop. It is nothing you can't do if you're a beginner uh, with basic understanding in Photoshop. You are not needing an extensive knowledge of Photoshop to follow this tutorial. So I'm gonna start here. The very first thing that I always do because it bothers me is when things aren't straight. So I'm gonna straighten this out. And the tool that I use for that usually is right here in the transform and it's auto. And I hit that and not, it doesn't work every single time, but the majority of the time it really, really sets it straight. And then I'm gonna hit constrain right here. When, it, when you get the white marks around the photo, you need to go ahead and hit constrain so that it stays within the crop. But then I'm also going to hit the crop tool up here because it went too far to the right than I want. So I'm gonna make it just a tiny bit smaller so that I can move it here to the left. And it's nice and straight and then hit done. So that already uh, makes me happy just to see it straight like that. The second thing that I'm going to do is come in kind of close and I'm going to use the clone tool um, up top here but I'm gonna use it on heel I really don't ever use it on clone it's too strong so turn it to heel if you're having a hard time using this tool in Lightroom you might have it on um, clone instead of heel so I'm going to heal out these lines right here and if you hit your H key it's gonna show you where your selection is coming from and you can move it and then you can hit the H key again to hide it Sometimes when you're working in a small area, um, all those lines and little circles make it really hard for you to work. So I sit here and click the H key back and forth so that I can see where it's coming from, but I can also move it and see what else needs to be touched up. And I'm pretty particular during this touch up because after I take it over to Photoshop and do the skin smoothing, um, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to do this kind of touch-up. It doesn't seem to blend in as well as it does if you get this done first. So I'm really going to find some good uh, spots to heal here and I'm going to clone them out. This will just be a second. Um, I mean, I could do this really quickly and not really do it the way that I normally would, but I want you to see what it is that I 
that I really do and the way that I kind of, I don't want to say pick apart a photo, but that kind of is what you're doing when you're deciding what needs to be edited. You're looking at what's um, sort of wrong with the photo or what needs to be touched up, what keeps catching your eye, what needs to be changed. So that's, um, that's how I look at boudoir. I'm trying to make this person look the best version of themselves. I want them to only see the beauty. I don't want to see all these little things that we need to touch up. Okay little bit here, that small line, this small line right here. And then I'm going to come down through here. I'm going to touch up these spots. Now, if somebody has an actual like beauty mark or something on their face, um, and this is something you do need to talk about when you're shooting. It's easy to bring up. It's easy to ask the client if they, um, if they like their beauty marks, their moles, their freckles, whatever it is, scars. Um, or if they want you to retouch them. And they'll, they won't have any problem with you asking. Um, and it's super easy. It'll just take you a moment. And, you know, if you see a scar or something like that, just say, hey, during the editing process, I am able to either, you know, keep this or I can remove it for you. What, you know, what do you feel like? How would you feel about me either leaving it or removing it? And they'll tell you no problem. And then you'll know how to go forward in the editing. And when I'm moving my screen around, I'm pushing the space bar and that brings up my little hand and that is what makes me able to move the screen around while staying in the tool. Just a little quick thing you might not have known. Okay, I'm gonna go back to fit here. And I feel like that looks good. I feel like there's not anything else I need to touch up so I'm going to hit done. And then I am going to hit Command E. And Command E is going to take me into Photoshop. It automatically sends it from Lightroom into Photoshop. And over here in Photoshop, I am in the Pretty Actions Newborn because I really like the skin smooth in there and who doesn't want their skin to look smooth as a baby bottom. So that's the preset that, excuse me, action, we call them actions in Photoshop, that's the action that I use pretty often over here uh, to smooth out the skin and it'll run the action here and then it's going to pop up over here and even if you don't understand Photoshop like I said actions are the way to start because you really you don't have to know exactly why it's doing what it's doing you just have to understand your brush you have to understand the difference between your black and white colored brush over here and that's really about it uh, maybe a little bit about opacity. So right here, anytime you run an action and a file pops up right here, you can open it. And then that means that you can change things within here. One thing I am going to turn off is healthy tone. Just because uh, she already has a healthy tone and I don't want to ch actually change the tone of her skin. Um, and also the room and stuff is a little bit warm, so I don't want to add any warmth to her either because I don't want her to look orange. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to make sure that I'm clicked right here in my box. I'm going to hit the B because it brings up a brush tool. Um, but before I start brushing, I'm actually going to hit the Z key to zoom in because you do want to be close while you're um, using your brush tool. Then I'm going to hit the B again and it'll bring my brush back up. I'm at 100% opacity up here and I'm just going to start brushing this on her skin. Now you do have to be careful, but you don't have to be ridiculous. This is not anything that you have to scroll all the way in, you know, until you're pixel peeping and getting extremely close. It's unnecessary. Keep it off the lashes, keep it off the lips, keep it off the hair and clothes. Um, and I try and keep it off the very, like I don't run over the edge. You know what I mean? I stay within um, the skin. I try not to run over the edge of a skin because I don't want it to blur that line. Um, and I am making my brush bigger and smaller with the keyboard keys. And to tell you the truth, I don't even know what those two keys are called. Maybe the bracket keys, I believe. They're um, the two keys that make the little, yeah, I guess it is the brackets because it makes the little brackets next to almost like parentheses, but the little square ones. 
That is what makes your brush larger and smaller in Photoshop. I hope bracket key is the right term for it. Um, on the far right side, right by delete and return is where the key is located. And that just makes your brush bigger and smaller. And then here, I'm gonna make my brush bigger, go over the shoulder. You always wanna be very aware of like underarms. You definitely wanna always smooth them out. You don't wanna draw attention to underarms. Um, just all the way down and don't forget hands. Hands are always important. You don't want them to look different than the rest of the body. So do a quick pass over those. Adjusting your brush as you go. Okay, and the same thing um, over here, if you hit that space bar while you're working with a brush, it brings up the little hand icon and you can move the screen around, which really is a helpful little trick. Brush a little smaller, come in here. You really do want to make sure that you're getting all the skin evenly. Even if you think a portion of the skin doesn't really need smoothing, um, you, you don't want it to look different in the end when you scroll out. So you really want to get it all brushed the same. And then if something needs more, you can go back and do another layer if something needs extra. And this smoothing is just a nice amount. It's nothing insane. She doesn't look plastic. Um, but like I said, for me, my clients are expecting a retouched image. And um, that's fine. That's what I, that is the style that I like as well, which is obviously why I started doing it that way. Because, um, you know, as women or as humans, I guess, we do have a tendency to find flaws in ourselves, especially in a picture. And if you've ever taken a picture of a woman, you will know that. Um, so when it comes to boudoir, you know, that is what I am trying to do. I am trying to give them the best possible version of the photo of them that they are going to look at and love and be able to remember um, that time of their lives. And retouch is a huge part of that. Smooth along the knee here. We got down on her foot. All this is done. Okay, I'm gonna hit the Z key again and zoom out. Um, and I am happy with that. And one thing that I'm going to show you that you might think that I'm crazy uh, when I do this right now, but it's a tool that is absolutely invaluable. You need to learn how to use this tool and honestly you can learn right now. It's easy as can be. First of all, I'm going to hit layer and I'm going to flatten the image. Hit OK. I'm going to come up here to my filter and hit liquify. I am not even going to lie. I do not know how to use all of these buttons in liquify. I will tell you what I do know how to use, which is this top button here. And I use it all the time. And I'm sure when you're looking at this photo, you're thinking, oh my God, she's beautiful, she's amazing, she is. But there are tiny, tiny things that you will start to see need to be retouched. And it's very, very, very simple. Because we see that she looks really beautiful, but you have no idea. She's going to come right here and she's going to go, but my leg is squishing out right here. And so you've got to start to learn to look at this the way she is going to look at it, not the way you're going to look at it. So right here, I'm going to adjust this. I'm going to pull it this way just a little bit to straighten this out so that it doesn't look like it's squishing out because I cannot even tell you how many times I have heard the term, but my leg is squishing out. So when you see little teeny tiny things like that, to me, during boudoir, you fix it. So same mm -hmm. right here. I am going to bring this in just the tiniest bit. Now these are not huge adjustments. They're tiny, but they do make a difference in the end. I'm gonna bring this in a tiny bit right here. I'm gonna bring this in a tiny bit. 
These are all small, small, small adjustments, but overall, um, they make a difference. And it's the same thing as learning, you know, when you first look at a photo and you start to realize, okay, this is overexposed, this is underexposed, it's pink, it's too warm, it's too cool. They're just things that you start to understand when you look at a photo. So we're done with that. We don't need to um, we don't need to close flatten the layer again. It's already flattened. So now I'm done in Photoshop. There's nothing else I want to do in Photoshop. So I'm going to hit Command S, and that is going to take it back to Lightroom with our new adjustments from Photoshop. So this is how we started before we took it over there. After we did our retouch, but before we took it over there. And then this is after Photoshop. Just going to go switch back and forth. And you can just see those teeny tiny adjustments. Okay, now when I bring it back to Lightroom is when I do my final adjustments and when I use my presets. Um, over here on this one, and this Freesia is, and I hope I'm even saying that right. I don't know if it's Freesia or Freesia. I'm going to say it Freesia. Um, that is what I use a lot of times in this area of the studio and with people with very light skin like this because I think it brings out the fact that her skin is really light and beautiful, um, but it doesn't make it a weird tone. It brings out makeup. It brings out the blacks nicely. Um, I love the look of Freesia for Boudoir. And it almost has, I don't know, I don't want to say like a matte effect, but it has, let me look over here. Yeah, actually in the tone curve, it does come up. So there is a little bit of a matte effect, which I like, so I'm good with that. Um, I'm going to come in close again and just double check that there's nothing that I missed that I want to touch up. And if there is, I will touch it up now. Same thing, I'm hitting that spacebar key to move around the screen. When I want to move, I push the spacebar down, it brings up the little hand, and then I know I can move around the screen. Okay, I'm going to hit fit again. And I think that that's actually good. The only other thing that I do a lot um, is I'll use my uh, brush tool right here on Lighten. And you can bring some light back to like the center of things. So sort of down the center of the thigh. You don't really want to go on the two edges because you want the shadows there because that makes things look thinner. When things are light in the center and then darker on the edges, it has a more slimming effect. Um, Although the skin here on her tummy is a little bit darker, so I'm going to lighten that just a little bit through the middle so that we're not losing that area. And I'm just hitting new over here when I want to do more. And yes, you can just hit your change your exposure, but I'm not necessarily always brushing in exactly the same place. So I like to hit new rather than change Sometimes I change it, but usually I like to go ahead and just hit new so that I'm more stacking the, stacking it on top of each other instead of lightening it so heavily in one spot. Hit new again, and I'm going to do it one more time here in the middle. And you can just see how that light is bringing out different aspects of the photo. It's really called like dodge and burn, which a lot of people do in Photoshop, and you can, but you can also do that really easily here in Lightroom. So I'm happy with this. I think she looks lovely. I think it's um, a beautiful edit, and you can see how quick that was from over here. And this was, um, we've already done some of our retouch here, but, and straightened it. But that was basically in Lightroom. And then that was after Photoshop and after our super easy preset. And I didn't even need to adjust that preset at all. I like it just the way that it is. It has a nice little bit of a vignette, which is pretty for um, boudoir. And I am hoping that you learned something new or that you are inspired to maybe try some of these techniques yourself or get into, um, if you've been thinking about getting into boudoir photography, not being scared and not being... Um, worried that you won't be able to edit them uh, an appropriate way because I think that you will be able to. So I'm going to do two more videos, the other two photos that you see uh, there at the bottom of the screen, 
and I am excited. I hope you come and look at those two, and I hope to see you this week on Pretty Actions, Pretty Preset, on the blog, and in the forum. And if you have any questions, just write them down so that um, you can jump in one of those uh, social media forums and ask me anything that you need. Thanks. See you next time. Bye.